Hello Weekend Warriors, welcome back to the workshop. Uh, today we're going to revisit the bottle crafts. Um, in the last few months, actually in the last couple of weeks, I've been experimenting with some different techniques for, for sanding and polishing the edge on, on a cut bottle. And I've also changed my, uh, my uh, bottle cutting jig a little bit, so I thought I'd share it with you today and then we would, uh, we would polish up the edge on a bottle. So I'm going to move the camera around a little bit and we'll do a quick refresher on how we set up the bottles, how we cut them, and then we'll get right on into getting them all polished up and ready to be used as glasses or whatever. So uh, yeah, stand by and I will be right on back. Okay, I'm back, and here's the cutting fixture. Now you notice at least one change, that is, I've mounted a drill. Because in the original video I posted, I was using my, my benchtop belt sander to try to smooth the glass, and I was using it with my sanding drums. However, my sanding drums didn't fit perfectly, and they gave quite a bit of vibration. Now I haven't gotten rid of all that vibration, but I have gotten rid of having to use the, uh, the uh, belt sander. And what I'm doing is I'm using the drum sanders the way they were meant to be in the first place. That is to say, I'm using them in a drill chuck. So I've got, what I've done is I've taken a Harbor Freight variable speed drill, reversible the whole nine yards, and I've mounted it on my fixture, and I've mounted the uh, sanding drum into the chuck. And believe it or not, that works faster and better than it did with the belt sander. Even though the belt sander was high speed, one of the problems was it wasn't variable speed, so I couldn't slow it when I needed to. And it would heat up the glass and sometimes chip the glass, making it a little bit more work for me to try to smooth it. With this, I don't have that problem. I don't have a problem with the glass heating up, and I can, I can work straight through. Another change I made was twisting the, the uh, cantilever arm here, or the lever arm down. I twisted it 9 degrees, so the small side is laying flat now. And I mounted the glass cutter in on the small side. And then I've twisted it to bring the glass cutter a little bit further into perpendicular than it was before. Uh, I was getting a good score line before, but it was a little bit ragged. And that was causing some problems when it came time to break the bottle. So I've made those changes, and uh, now it's even easier to use. It works even better, and I get through a glass project much, much quicker. So let's go ahead and uh, and uh, tighten this guy back down onto the bench. We'll cut a couple of bottles. We'll take those from a rough edge to a smooth edge, and then we'll call it quits for this, unless I come up with a better idea for, for something in the future. So. Let's go ahead and just get right on it here. We'll tighten this guy down nice and tight because the drill is going to vibrate and I don't want it vibrating anything loose. And here I have one Mike's Hard Lemonade bottle. Now I make two cuts in these. I make one to make a glass and then I make one to make a shot glass. Now to make the shot glass cut I'm still, still going to use the G2 bottle cutter just because it works off the mouth of the bottle and I don't have to worry about an uneven bottom or anything like that. So for the shot glass I can just set it up and go right around. And as I go you can hear just a little bit of crunch of the glass get being cut and then when I reach the end you can hear another crunch when the two ends match up. And if you can see it, that's what it looks like when we have a good score line. Now I'm going to do the second score line for the bottom. And I'm going to match it up right here. Now one thing I want to make sure is that my pivot point here is dead center in the bottle. Because that's going to keep the bottle from going uh, up and down or anything, being out of shape. And once again, make for a nice even all the way around line. So I put it in. I start going, I'm listening for that crunching sound of the glass cutter scoring the glass. And I'm not pressing down uber hard here, I'm just enough to get the job done, listen for that crunch when it gets all the way around, and there we go, two score lines. 
and I'm going to do it one more time on another bottle, that I've already scored the, uh, the neckline on. And there we go again. All right, now comes time to pop the bottle. Now, we've done this before. I'm going to do it again. I'm using the same alcohol lamp I used before. Got my cotton, cotton wick going down into the alcohol, which I'm going to have to refill before too terribly long here. Here's our scored bottles. Here's my Doc McStuffins bucket of cool water. Now it's just a matter of heating this up to the right level without cracking the, the bottom part of the glass. And it doesn't take very long. Three or four rotations, 30 or 40 seconds. Holding it just over the flame. And there was a nice little crack come out of the bottle there. And looking down through the bottle, let's see if we can do this here. We can see the crack has formed all the way around so it won't be long now before this one pops apart. So I'm going to give it a little dry off here so it doesn't drip down onto my wick. And now I'm still hearing it pop and crack a little bit as I go. So it won't take very long. This was a wine bottle, it might take a little bit longer, you know, two or three minutes. There we go, even before I got it in, just the weight of the top took it off. And now let me dry it, dry it off a little bit so you can see the edge. Now as compared to a uh, the method where they take a acetone soaked string and set it on fire and then cool it down. This is pretty smooth. However, I wouldn't put my lips on that. It's, it's still pretty rough for that. It's got kind of a lippy outside to it. But you can see how rough that's looking. Alright. Let's pop the other one loose. So doing the same thing. Just over the flame. Now, with a bottle like this, I'm not worried about the water running up the neck, so I always put it in mouth first, because there's enough back pressure caused by the body of the bottle to keep the water from flowing all the way up to my cut line. So I'm able to get the stress I need across the, the uh, score mark. However, when I'm doing uh, the shot glasses, and that's about halfway through there, when I'm doing the shot glasses, I don't have that luxury because the bottom is open. So what I do is I stick a cork in the end. I could also just recap the bottle. Of course, on this round, my wife appears to have thrown all her caps away. You know, these are just twist offs, so which means they twist on pretty well too. Okay, still need to go again. And then before I do the shot glasses, I think I'm going to need to uh, refill my alcohol. Okay, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but there's a slight crunching sound as I twist here. Because the heat's now doing its job. And there it went.
Who would listen to that happen? Crunch. Anything left in there? Now it's ready to come apart. Just like that. Okay, now comes the fun part. Smoothing. Alright, here's the smoothing section of the jig. Once again, variable speed drill held in with a plumber's clamp. In that jig, I'm out one of four uh, sanding drums, 150 grit, 220 grit, a 400 grit, and then my homemade polishing 600 grit. Now it's homemade, like I said, all I did was take a two inch hole saw and then a, piece, a heavy piece of foam, real dense foam, and I cut a couple of plugs out, and then I also cut out of some eighth inch stock two end caps using a quarter inch bolt they're squeezed together and then I just coat the back of some 600 grit sandpaper with some some spray adhesive wrap it around whoops there it goes and I end up with that guy there okay here's the setup once again variable speed drill half inch truck so it'll fit my my sanding drums I also have set up a vacuum attachment I can sneak right on up to the drum here and that'll take care of quite a bit of the dust now it's real important that you wear uh, breathing protection and eye protection when you're grinding glass I shouldn't have to tell you that but just in case you don't realize it glass inhaling bad thing so let me get my breathing protection on there we go and I'm just using your basic dust mask Now, I've got the vacuum and my drill hooked up to the same switch, so I can't have one without the other. And now I'm just ready to go. I've... Before I forget, eye protection is a must. So I've got my glasses on. They are polycarbonate. They are meant for doing this sort of thing. Always make sure you protect your eyes. And on this one, make sure you protect your lungs. Okay, so now we've gone from this, we've got some real shiny jagged edges there, to this. It looks like it's a continuous frosted edge. The edges are very smooth now, inside and out. And the top edge, you don't see any little shiny spots in it, indicating that there's a deep, deep crevice in the glass, so it's nice and even all the way around. Now we want to do that to the other two and the uh, shot glasses. So I'll be back when it's time to uh, change grits. All right, now I'm set up with the 220 grit. And this isn't going to take long at all. The, the initial sanding to get the lips smooth without all the crackle marks in it, that takes the longest. This is just going to be a couple of hits uh, for, for each glass and each shot glass and uh, then it's going to be moving on to the next grit so I'm not going to waste any time
And now we have a high gloss finish on each glass and each shot glass. It's beautiful. And there we have it. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, this is the end result of today's playing in about Oh, I'd say an hour 20 minutes of actual working time. I did everything that you see in front of you. And just so you realize just how smooth those edges are, let's get another look. You can see the shine on the edge of that glass right there. And that's all from the sanding that we did. Now, I generally don't leave the labels on. I'll soak that off at some point and it'll just be a clear looking glass. But you could take some acrylic and coat over the label and then you know what you were drinking a while back. And all of these have got that same shiny edge to them. It's perfectly smooth. There's no gaps. There's no chips. There's nothing sharp. It's a wonderful thing. So wine bottles, they can either be a great self-watering planter for small plants or they make an awesome tea glass. Whether it's Long Island ice or standard sweet tea, that's up to you. But all in all, it's a fun hobby and yeah, at some point it could even be profitable. And that's all I've got for this episode. So you all take it easy, keep up the good fight, and when I see you next time, we'll start building on the jig. So you can build your own glassworks or bottleworks jig. So I'll see you then. Bye.